What's up guys? So we just finished the Void Shard event on weekend. Probably many were saving the voids for Sunday, waiting for the Reho 15 acts to end. And we're already getting spammed by many shard events, so Raid is continuing the usual route. Also, we have kind of interesting event, let me find it. In case I missed yet, the Deck of Fate event is pretty interesting. Maybe I should make a separate video about it, but um, I think I might actually go for this and not skip, not, not skip this. Usually I do skip them, but you don't have to summon for this. It's just upgrading artifacts and getting them or accessories. So it's doable. Of course, the fusion is coming up and it's going to use your resources for that. So it kind of depends how much you have, but I haven't been using my silver a lot. Maybe I can do it. I'll have to crunch the numbers and get more into it. But I wasn't expecting them to give Slayer set from events that weren't Forge Pass. And yeah, I think I will go for this, but I will have to look a little bit more into it. Also, I think there's some interesting news coming up. We will see about that. Not related to Plarium per se, but let's say to Clan Scene. But there's no gag order, but I'm just gonna wait to see how it plays out because there's some interesting um let's say puzzle pieces to, the, to this that might affect the result and i kind of want to see how how it um how it develops but there's gonna be some changes to the clan scene let's say i'm sure many people know already it's no secret but i'm just gonna talk about it when i when I know the final things, but I already have some um, some things that I might take an issue with that I'm curious to see how they develop. Okay, so we got the Arman's first pick again. Gonna go with my my go to tried and true strategy of going with Narses. I'm Quintus. What? I'm still kind of surprised that they actually did the guaranteed event for Narses. Sometimes people, me specifically at least, I tend to think kind of negatively and think that they on purpose make things hard and difficult and I'm sure that they do. But then sometimes they, we had them, at one point we had the summon event for Candrophon, who was meta at the time and people were super shocked that they would add a champion like that to it, and now they did it with Narsus, and sometimes they do these very um, very positive things that kind of surprise me, but almost like they didn't realize how strong it would be, but anyway. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm gonna go with UDK and Rotos. I don't think UDK is the best choice against Quintus, but I mean, I'm not that scared of Quintus, so that's fine for me. I guess it's okay with Rotos, because that means that he can't one-shot it. Bomb team, I have everybody in stone skin, so that's not good. I'm almost tempted to ban Gaius, but he has both Lockout and Aramon, so am I gonna get any turns at all? And he does have the multi-hit on. Okay, let's go for the Aramon span, but I think I might actually lose the first fight. It kind of looks... Looks like he got me. I've been putting so much stone skin to everybody that I'm very vulnerable to this and I'm not very fast so this is actually very easy to pull off against me even though it might not not be possible at all against some other people. Okay, we got Polymorph proc. 
I like that he's using Quintus. Quintus is one of those champions, kind of like the opposite of the Candrathon and um, Narsus event, that Quintus is so hard to get champion, it should have been one of the mascots of Raid, like Arbiter is. I feel like they should have made it more relevant, but he's kind of forgotten and unused champion. Even though he's, I mean, I have talked about him in the past, I used to be kind of excited a long time ago about him. But we have just gotten so many strong champions in the meta that there's really no place to win those. He would have been good a long time ago, like pretty much any nuker in the current meta, but it is kind of shame that he's not, not really that useful. I mean, he does have some utility, but He's not tanky. There's champions that do way more damage and have way more utility, like the primal champions such as Lazarus or Siegfund or even the new Ogryn. Ogryn Nuger, I forgot his name, but the one that battles with burns. Okay, it wasn't that bad. I don't know how it would have played out if I didn't proc the Polymorph. It might have gone worse, I think, maybe not. I guess my Duchess didn't get one-shotted, so maybe I would have been fine, but... I, I guess he lost the attack buff, so maybe it would have hit harder, I'm not sure. I think if you, if you get Polymorphed, I'm not sure. I feel like it used to be so that if you lose the attack buff, then then the damage is applied. But then I, maybe they change it at some point. Anyway, I'm not quite sure. Moving on to the next fight. But yeah, I think we're gonna have another eventful week because there's gonna be some shuffles in the clan scene. And there's gonna be the content creator awards. And are we gonna get the fusion as well? And then there was some some other news that I don't have any details about that they were teasing, so who knows. But yeah, the Void event was, was a fiasco to me again. I hope you guys had better luck, but like I said on my Void video, I guess I'm saving my RNG for Primals and I'm sure next time Next time everybody will be lucky that wasn't this time, for sure. Okay, wasn't Armand's first pick? I don't know if he doesn't have Armand's or he just doesn't appreciate this it as much as everybody else does. I'm still kind of interested to see if Armand is gonna get nerfed. I feel like they could almost nerf him, so... But they are just... So, um... They have PTSD about nerfing champions. I have explained this before, but... The backlash around Urogrim was like a big drama for Plarium, and the community managers still have PTSD about the backlash, so... They just really don't want to nerf any champion in the game. Even though there's very big popular um, demand for Armands to get nerfed, I see that a lot in the CC chat, but I'm not really sure what's gonna happen. I think if he's gonna get nerfed, it's gonna be like in six months and not anytime soon, but I don't really know. I feel like he's almost on the tier that it's possible that it could happen, but... Uh, yeah, let's just go with Angora. Maybe I'll go with something else than Rotos here. Oh, he went with Rotos. Um, he does have the Grixia Kaimar combination, which is a bit scary, but I think I'm gonna go with Wukong and and ban the Harima. I might regret this, but this is what we're gonna go for. 
My, my Armand is gone. Oh, he did ban the Armand. That's funny. I'm not confident that my Armands would have been faster than him, but maybe it would have been. Who knows? I wasn't expecting him to get banned. I was going to say that Armand's, Armand's pick was actually utterly useless in this matchup, but I guess it wasn't. Maybe, maybe I bluffed him and he had no idea that my Armands is in stone skin and not that fast. But yeah, I don't know if I really want Armands to get nerfed. I'm maybe kind of like neutral on it. I could see it either way. I mean, there's definitely other good champions, but Armands is very... Uh, what's the right word? It's not something that you can really counter, so I totally could see them nerfing it. We, we should have like a like a raid balance council where the community managers and random players and content creators are in. That would be kind of fun. I know they had something like that in World of Warcraft at some point. Definitely not going to happen, but that, that would be just a fun thing if they did it. I don't think champion rebalance or the balance in general is at the forefront of most people's mind who are playing the game casually, so... I think we got this fight. I mean, we even got our cooldowns back, so we're not gonna get double hit. And I have my Narhasin speed boots, but it should be still enough. Yeah, okay. Easy. <laughs> we're off to good start. Nice. I, I keep having kind of. Um, I'm sure the, these two are definitely not the worst opponents that we're gonna meet today. I was kind of getting some easy battles at start, but I've um, been having kind of ups and downs. Sometimes I have massive win streaks and sometimes it's just depressing losses back and forth and to the same people. Wait, was that this? No, that's a different guy. Okay. No. Miss clicks. Yeah, I haven't um haven't browsed Reddit for a couple of days and I know some people hate the Reddit, some people love it, but I'm kind of curious to see what what they're talking about in relation to the new stuff or aren't they talking about it at all? Yeah, by the way. I have mentioned this in the CC chat before. I don't know why they can't do it. It's so annoying. There's multiple other things in relation to the daily quests. I think I'm sure I'm gonna forget one of them when I'm on the spot for the video. But for instance, there should be a tree summon or they could make it like a weekly quest. I just hate that quest. Another one is for instance, when you do the Doom Tower daily keys and you can do double keys but you have 15 keys and it doesn't automatically swap back to single key so you have to every day you have to change back to double keys and then back to single keys and it's just super annoying it's not a big deal but it's and you I think that they could easily chains and make it user friendly it should have been from the start i don't know why they why something like that was even released um maybe i'm gonna go with wukong instead of rotos and just ban the harima maybe maybe i can stay alive long enough to do it let's give it a go even if i get locked out maybe it's doable but yeah it's Super annoying to deal with this every day. It's not a big deal, but they could easily give us a three summon option or just alter the quest to make it less tedious.
Okay, I guess we're gonna have a day where we talk about kind of UI quality of life updates, but let's look at it. This thread. We should have a customizable, unkillable training dummy to test our champions. Something that the arena people have been talking about for years is that it would be very cool to be able to do friendly fights, even if it was only limited to your clan mates or something like that. Some of the customizable options should include able to change. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so it's just battle dummy. I thought it was some other additions to it. Yeah, yeah, I think um, that could be its own thing, just like we have Doom Tower and so on. There could be some battle testing ground or whatever, and maybe you could do friendly battles and do some custom custom maybe boss battles or whatever. That that could be a fun thing if they are I don't know how they could make some rewards tied to it or <laughs> make people wail for it that it would be interesting to them, so I don't think that's on top of their priority list. I have actually asked, can we get a new raid, um, what was the word for it? Content map? No, what was the word that they used? They used to have the map with all of the upcoming content ideas, timeline. I was asking what updates are we gonna get this year or in the upcoming ones and can we get a map like that, but they said that they are not gonna tell us the details in advance, so... Okay, let's get back to the Reddit later. But yeah, I don't really have any good um, leaks about upcoming content. I would be kind of curious about it as well, but... I don't know, I haven't really... Um, I haven't really tried to know, I guess you could ask some of the people that have leaks, but I haven't really... <laughs> I haven't been paid attention to that stuff ever since I got into the content creation program, so... Content creation program, so... I'm sure some people might have leaks, but I haven't even asked about them. But yeah, basically uh, he has double lockout with Grixia and Lazarus. If we can just get one turn with Wukong using the A2, we're gonna win, so... Not sure how exactly it's gonna play out. Damn, his team is so much faster than mine. <laughs> Yeah, everybody's taking like 15 turns in in between my turns. Yeah. I think that's it. If if I moved before the Lazarus with either Narcissus or Wukong, I think I should have been good, but with the CV turn meter boost and the speed buff, I guess I just wasn't able to do it. It, it looked like Lazarus had maybe like 70% turn meter and my Wukong was at full, so I thought I could, could get it done, but I guess not. Now, now it's too late. Ankara is so low HP and locked out. Surely no way I can win it. But yeah, I mean, I feel like Lazarus is kind of a fair champion, even though he's super strong, many would say OP. Yeah, I wish I had 6 star polymorph there, but... Lazarus is very good, but he's still a squishy champion, and I guess he does have some damage mitigation that scales from his attack, but that's not really big enough to be relevant. So you need to go first or have some lockout or something to protect him. Which I guess he can do against me, but um, if both people have good champion pulls, 
Blasarius isn't like guaranteed safe pick and you can definitely deal with him. I guess you could, you could say, say the same about Armans that just go first and Armans isn't an issue. But um, I think Armans is even more oppressing than Lazarus. Even though Lazarus is probably like better champion in general, I would say. Like Lazarus is better, but it's very easy to just dominate the entire fight with Armans with like basically no like as long as you go first you're good no, nothing else matters or Lazarus um, you have lots of utility but um obviously he's not gonna go first as an ogre unless your team provides it and even now it's taking him forever to kill my team even though I have been locked out the entire fight and I haven't gotten a single turn to nuke him, so... Lazarus does have good damage, so let's not say that he doesn't. Okay. I think, I feel like we could have won that fight maybe if we got like... Turn meter proc with the passes at that time when... Um, I mean, it kind of looked like I was gonna win, but all of them took another turn before me, but... I kind of want to meet that guy again. Uh, also, like I said, I was actually recently talking with the uh, Plarium community managers about the updates. I was kind of trying to try some leaks, but they they were obviously not gonna give me any. But um, I did, did ask about the like the battle rules thing that are we gonna get any live arena like tournaments or different kind of formats into it. They basically said that they have no plans for it right now, so I'm gonna assume that that's not gonna be a thing, sadly. I still kind of feel like clearly they were planning to do it, but I guess not. Okay, George got the... got the Narses and Lockout. I guess we're just gonna go full... full Rotos in this fight, but he has the Harima too, so... Oh, he didn't go for Harima. Well, technically he could go with Triple Nuka. Not like that isn't an option. I would probably do it if I was him. Maybe he's gonna go with Triple Nuka. Um, let me think about it. Yeah, I guess there's not too much. I could... I could go with Helicat, but I'm not sure if we're even gonna be able to ban the Grixia. And she does have bar strip, so... I don't know if Helicat would actually be that good. Let's do it anyway. Let's see what happens. But I feel like even though he has two nukers, there's a good possibility that he's gonna go with Harima and get the third nuker. Maybe if, if he does pick Harima, I'm still gonna ban the Greeks here. I'm just gonna, yeah, commit to it and see what happens. Oh, Arbiter. I don't have any reaction on my Armands. I mean, he's already with two stone skin accessories, so... George, it can ignore stone skin. If he goes before my Armands, I don't... Yeah, okay, I think we're screwed. Well, I guess he, he has to decide either Helicat or Armands, so... Okay, so maybe we're gonna have some... I would have... I would have killed the Armands if I was him, but... 
Fair enough. I, I, I will take that. I think he, I think he might regret letting the other ones live, but okay. I guess you're gonna do what you're gonna do. Um, actually, let's pull him off the charge it. Not that I mean I could easily kill him, but I want to buff strip the rest of the team, and I think we're just gonna. The others were stunned anyway, so we're just gonna kill it as the last one. I could have easily killed the charge it, but this is probably the safer route. Yeah, I, th I think, yeah, okay, we're good. And then if I killed the polymorph there, I and mean, the charge it got in before everybody, he could either kill the Rotos with A1 or kill everybody else with the ally attack, but yeah, we were good. Okay, nice. We, I think, how, let's see how the player power. I think eh, 30 million, it's not that high. Uh, well, I mean, okay, <laughs> never mind. He does have plus three, plus three Crixia and Siegfried, so I think it's safe to say that that's a pretty strong account that is maybe slightly above my league. Maybe, maybe not that much. I mean, I'm sure my, my gear is like 1500 times better than his champion, so maybe only a little bit better than my account. <laughs> but yeah, okay. Okay, now we got, we had two kind of softball wins and then one loss, but now we got a win against good account. Nice. I kind of want to get him again, but I feel like if I do get him again, he's just going to pick Harem and I'm going to get crushed. I often have those fights that I fight some really good account and they aren't really like specifically thinking about countering me and I win them once but in, then in the second fight they easily uh, easily dominate me. I'm not even trying to shield, I just want to play it on my off screen at the same time. AFK Journey is so good game to play on the side, so might, might as well take the opportunity to do it. It would be super funny. I mean I don't think they I mean they don't pay attention enough to do it, but it would be kind of funny if um, if Plarium copyrighted some of my raid videos because I also play play AFK Journey at the same time. I don't think they will do that, but it's almost something that some other companies might do. Uh, no, not that they like. I mean, they can do it, but it's not gonna stick. But they totally, they can do whatever they want. Uh, do I really want to go with the UDK? Maybe I'll just do it because the um, Lazarus is gonna ignore shields anyway, so I'm not gonna use Helic attack in Steam with buff strip and block buffs, debuff, and then um, even the bolster or Necret is not gonna be good, so. Yeah, th this is gonna be a rough one. I don't see see me winning this one. Now, normally I would ban the Harima without question, but with both Armans and Warlord in it, we're not gonna get like any turns, so. Have to go for the Arman span and maybe I will get lucky and resist the lockout or something.
by the way, a little bit flex, but I'm rank 13 on the daily cl clan boss again in um, AFK Journey. You, you get extra rewards if you rank high. And um, I was kind of thinking that it's going to get tougher the longer the game lasts, but actually I'm slowly climbing a little bit in the rankings. And for the last like few days, maybe five days, I have been in um, top 10 to 20 every time. So actually gotten a bit improvement there. It works a bit different there that um, you get the same champions over and over again. There's not that many champions and you need tons of copies of the same ones. And you you can do like a wish list and you're only going to get champions from it. So um, like um, the way you planned what champions you're going to go for early on kind of dictated your uh, trajectory a bit. and. I feel like I made the right choices to get the edge in the competition, so... Doing pretty good. The PvP scene in AFK Journey is not what it is in Raid, but... I do like uh, playing some other games as well. I mean, let, let's be honest, I mean... Raid PvP is definitely way better than in... Uh, Watch of Realms, Dragonair, AFK Journey, you name it, Raid... Ray PvP beats it and it's not even close. But in regards to many other stuff, like I feel like Raid is much less user friendly than, than those other games. No, not even talking about like free stuff, like getting a lot of champions and so on, but just the UI, kind of like I was talking about the daily quests with summoning the Summoning the three champions that is super tedious are doing the Doom Tower keys, stuff like that. Or, um, I mentioned it before, but in Watcher of Realms, for instance, and by the way, you actually have the same thing in Dagonair, but both of these games have it. The UI in Watcher of Realms is a bit better, but you can just swap champions, um, swap items between champions, and it doesn't cost anything. And in Watcher of Realms, you can just instantly like um you have a new eye and then you can click on your like let's say protoss and wukong and i can instantly swap the gear between those two and it takes like a couple seconds and it's super um it makes the gameplay a lot a lot better especially if you <sighs> the harm of passive is just Fucking me too hard, otherwise the city would be easy kill, but I think um, Yeah, we're just gonna go for the other stuff But if you want to try hard in Dragon Air for in in Watch of Realms You can just swap your best item set Depending on the content in early game and it feels like you have a lot more agency that way I feel like it wouldn't be that big deal if Ray just let us put our best uh, best builds on whatever Hydra difficulty we're doing every time. Like, why not? I feel like they're just making it more annoying to the players on purpose. Everybody could do the same thing that they swap swap their best nukes at on Tranda and whatever nuker that they have on all of their three keys. I feel like they're just they're just doing it to spite us or because they're lazy like there's no good reason to really like okay here's a funny thing I have a, exactly this thing I have mentioned in the past in the content creator chat and the actual response was that they are afraid that it would have big consequences to the game balance and I don't know what they mean about that I don't think it would affect the game balance in any way like sure People would have a little bit more silver, but is that a big deal? I I don't think that the, that really relates to game balance at all. Maybe the balance of some events, but I mean they can just take that into account. I I don't know what to say, but it's so it's so daunting, and I feel like they're just making the game much worse 
on purpose with very little benefit to them and I don't think after five years Raid is gonna change their mind about that kind of stuff. But like I said the PvP is way better than in other games. Even if the balance is what it is and the um, like okay like here is a good com comparison like so I have played the raid for since start longer than most people that I'm actually fighting today and of course I'm not the biggest spender but I have been playing very actively and very like um like hardcore I have try try harded everything and tried to be efficient and competitive and I'm struggling like this then AFK journey is only like a month in and I'm finishing like top 10 or top 20 in everything and you would think that maybe over time I could catch up to the whales a little bit more and it would get easier but already it feels like you have way more agency I wasn't meant to like shield for for AFK journey but um, especially since I didn't make any more videos yet except the one but you, you have these uh, tokens that you get from the daily um, daily clan boss basically and with these tokens you can just buy whatever champions that you want now the champions are kind of divided to two categories A level and S level basically like epic and legendary but there's not really a big distinction between those oftentimes the epics are better and you can upgrade both of them to max level. Um, yeah, you can actually do. You can buy some of the legendary champions with the tokens, for, with different tokens from BVP. But honestly, these these champions are even better than the ones on this pool. But yeah, you you get lots of champions, and you can decide which champions you want to go for. And with that, you can like you have more agency and you can be competitive and you can try to do better choices than other people and get ahead that, that's the part that i like about all kinds of rpg games it's not maybe maybe some people it's the journey it might be different things but i like being smart and being uh, efficient and oftentimes it feels like there is not really a lot of agency in raid anymore and you can't do it even even if you want to do it you just have to hope that you get the right primal champions from the pools or voids and that's pretty much it spend on the game and buy shards and then you can win i mean we like i said we have gotten some good fusions and so on but it still feels like there's not a lot of uh, choice in other stuff. By the way, I'm curious how many people actually do play AFK Journey from Raid players. Did any of you guys try it and drop it? Or you didn't even bother trying it? Because I do feel like the um, aesthetics of AFK Journey, I guess, isn't really suited for Raid players. And many people, from what I've seen, were not even interested to try it. Okay, we definitely do need the Duchess. Maybe we can, maybe we can be, win with Polymorph RNG against the. Uh, um, how did I forget his name? Galatir and Harima. We're definitely gonna need some Polymorph. Yeah, I, I guess I'm just gonna go with this, and I have to ban ban Harima. I guess there isn't much of a choice. I don't really want to go with the Duchess to be honest, but I need to pick something. 
Dutchess is gonna give us the bolster and Narciss is gonna double hit, but then he also has the Galater, so it's not like I can be Kaelicat. Yeah, double lockout, not gonna be fun, but we still have to go for the Harima banner, we can't do any damage. I feel like Raid is so good game in so many ways, if they just... It feels like they, because they kind of won, I, I don't mean like, they won real life, they, are, they have tons of players, they're marketing works they're getting tons of money and because of that they are not even trying to improve the game that, that's how i feel like, feel about it they could easily change many things and make the ga game way better and i don't think they would lose any money because of that but yeah i, I feel like they're not trying and those other games are trying but they just have Versus PvP or combat and visuals and Raid is such a giant that it's they they can't compete because of that. I wish okay maybe I'm getting to a bit spicy territory here, but <coughs> I wish we could just give give Raid to some other company. I feel like they they would. They will do a better job with that. Maybe I'm being super salty, I don't know, but that's kind of how I'm feeling today. I mean, we're getting the content creator awards and they are helping the CCs out, but I'm just whining about stuff, but uh, that's what I always do, so that's not gonna change. Not, not even if they include me into their, uh, in, into their competition. I am very, uh, uh, what's the word? Not flattered. I'm very flattered that they gave, like, I guess when they do it, I guess I'm gonna get mentioned. So that's super cool. <laughs> but they could, they could make the game better as well. Yeah, I don't think there's anything I can do about this team. Like, maybe if my Wukong resists a lockout. <laughs> I guess we just did, but I think it's also locked out by the Warlord, so that may not be enough. If I can get one Wukong A2, then I can win. Oh, it's so close. Oh, <laughs> actually, if I did kill the Warlord there, that might have been the biggest mistake of my life, but. Okay, let's see. I, actually, maybe that's that might be super good. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was gonna say if um, Wilder didn't die to that, and Ankara wasn't able to revive it with cooldowns, but we were able to kill the Warlord before the Ankara next turn, that would have been perfect. But okay, can my Wukong got in? It does seem like he's the highest turn meter, but in the other fight it looked like this. And oh, okay, we boost the turn meter with the passive. Okay, but Narsus didn't get turn meter. Why is he cutting in as well? So annoying. If I just got the turn there, then I could have done some great things. And I think uh, by the yeah, now he doesn't want to use lockout because he's saving it for later. That's why he's thinking. But I think even now that my Wukong gets revived with full turn meter. Probably the Warlord is still gonna cut in and lock me out, but if I can just do 1A2, then I might be able to take this fight. Maybe if I don't get Helm Smasher proc, it may not still be enough to win, but if I do, then it's definitely enough. But yeah, I think I think the Warlord is just gonna cut in again and I'm gonna feel sad. What? 
Was that a bug? I, I don't know why he would surrender by himself like that. Maybe I'm gonna assume that he actually didn't surrender and that was a bug because that happened to me a couple times. Maybe if my Wukong got to turn, I could have won there, but I don't think my Wukong was gonna get a turn, so I don't know what's up with that. Th that's another thing, like in the last couple of videos there has been lots of bugs in live arena where the battles are just getting um, cancelled for some reason. Okay, maybe that's not the best best thing to complain about because bugs are gonna happen and I think Plarium actually does pretty good job at doing bug fixes. They do them regularly, even though it might not um, it might go unnoticed by most people. But that's one thing that Parium is good at doing. I have reported multiple bugs in the past myself and they have all been fixed pretty timely, so th that's one thing that they do they do well. Let's give let's give them that at least. It might not be the first thing that comes onto your mind, but obviously a big game like Raid is gonna get tons of bugs and that isn't necessarily like that's not because they are like bad at coding there's just gonna be gonna be tons of bugs in massive games like this and I do feel like they actually the, the foxes do get big <laughs> do get fixed pretty fast actually maybe I can find it I have an old funny video like five years li like literally five years ago and um Wait. There used to be this bug where if um, Man Eater used the unkillable, it would permanently stay on your team. And I made a video about that. That's the first video on my channel. It was like a heated video that I just sent to their um, not community managers. Their ticket, their support yeah the support and i guess that got fixed like the same week in a couple days so and that, that's not the only one so okay i do prefer the angora the narciss over dots so the angora over dots so Maybe this will work better than the other fight. That that was basically the same same matchup. I could almost go for the Lazarus ban. I do have the cleanse. Yeah, let's actually go for Lazarus instead of Kalatir. Let's mix it up a little bit. I think they usually expect me, expect me to ban the Galatir. Maybe this throws them off a little bit. I feel like I, I have talked about this before, both on videos and on the Discord, but the lockout is so oppressive that you often have the natural reaction of banning it every time, but if you have very tanky teams like me, even though it's super risky, but you shouldn't always go for the lockout ban. Often you actually can just stay in the fight for 5 minutes and get a couple turns and you might actually be able to do it, but they kind of always can assume that you're gonna ban the lockout and it lets them draft perfect teams because they can count on the fact that they're gonna have their nukers and reviver and you're gonna have to go for the lockout. Okay. This is kind of looking bad. Even if we do get the Helm Smasher proc, and if we don't, then see if it's not gonna die. 
Okay, of course we didn't. Oh, it still died, but we didn't get the extra turn, and they have three force affinity champions. We got no revive, so not looking good. I have so many videos at this point that I have to scroll a little bit to find <laughs> find the oldest one. You don't have like a option in the YouTube uh, content create creator um, menu to go to the oldest video or show oldest to newest. That video is a hidden one, so you can see it from my channel. I actually have tons of hidden videos because I used to just make videos for um, not not public ones, but just for battles to like theory craft and uh, improve in arena. Okay, here here we have it. I don't think this video has any uh, sound. Let me put myself there. Damn. Okay, I guess the video... <laughs> you can't get the video with better quality than... Oh, oh, okay. It doesn't even show it from the start of the battle. I forgot about this, but... As you can see, I have been 5 minutes in the battle. This is like 5 years ago, so... Both of us have bad gear and not max level champions but yeah as you can see i'm endlessly trying to kill the Korgorup and their team gets revived many times and i'm just not able to it might almost seem like i don't have enough damage but i do have enough damage there's just a weird bug that the unkillable is permanent on the Korgorup even though it isn't visible and you can't actually make it out without deducing this from battle, but Raid does have bugs all the time, tons of them, but they, they do actually a pretty good, good job at getting rid of them. <laughs> Should I leave it on the other side? I always have it on the other side. I don't know if... Um, I don't think it really matters, but... I always have it on the left side. We're fighting a lot of people from the Omega cluster today. I guess that's gonna lean a little bit to what I teased at the start, but... Um, we will see what happens, but there, I guess there's gonna be another cluster. Something like that. I don't even know the specifics and... I'm just gonna kind of wait out to see what happens because I I haven't fully made up my mind what what I'm gonna do in relation to that either. So and yeah, blind arena. Where where is that? That's one of those kind of quality of life related things that people have been asking for a long time and I feel like that's one of the topics where there is um, actually a strong consensus between the PvP players. I don't really think there's anybody that disagrees with Blind Arena, but regardless it's not happening so... Maybe I should ask Doc Maybe we could make a video about that. I think that could be an interesting topic, but me and Rock, we kind of disagree on some things. That's like fine. Uh, I don't. That's one of the things where we don't really disagree. We, we might have some other uh, like things we focus on in relation to that, but that's not. That's we don't disagree on that. So maybe maybe we should make a video about Blind Arena. We have both ask about it many times in the CC chat and we kind of get lukewarm responses but maybe you could make some videos about that M might as well
Yeah, maybe I'll actually ask him after this video. Damn, he, he got both the Narses and Wukong. I think it must be a support Wukong, or is he running triple Nogar? Do I have to go with Eva? <laughs> I mean, I have to like get reaction Brock to get a turn with Eva here. I'm not really confident that's gonna happen. Okay. <sighs> I mean, he can easily counter this, but okay, where is gonna go with this? He could just pick somebody that has uh, like uh, so that I'm not able to ban the Wukong, like a lockout or another. Okay, he didn't. That's good. It's gonna be hard to kill his team with Helicat alone. I think he might go for the Rota Span, but uh, I think it might be doable. Oh, he didn't ban the Rotos. Um, in that case, I feel like I I won this battle. I mean, Narciss is gonna hit hard with the bolster dusts and so on. <laughs> it looks kind of funny that everybody gets feared and then the fear is removed because of the stone skin, but... By the way, think, think how annoying it is to fight this if you don't counter it. I have everybody in the stone skin and now I'm gonna put block damage. This is why everybody hates the Helicat so much, but... I don't think I'm gonna lose this fight. It looks super scary team, but he doesn't counter me. I feel like I can, I can just cheese this with Helicat. There's also no Harim either, so come on, give me a Helm, Helm Smasher Brock. Uh, I, I feel like I'm cursed lately. The, like. Ever since I put my Rotos in the stone skin, the 5% um, ignore defense, the less, the 5% less that I have of if ignore defense, it, it it is a decent deal when I used A2 and A1. It shouldn't be when I used A3, as long as I proc Helm Smasher, because I'm gonna be uh, fully ignoring the defense anyway. But I feel like I never proc it that in the like in the recent times, and I really shouldn't even have lost that much damage in spite of that. But it does feel like um, Rotos A3 is not doing doing its job lately. Sometimes it's like it one shots the tankiest champion through shields and strength and ev and everything, and sometimes I have like easy uh, marks like that, and he does like 50k or whatever, then it should be like 250k. I think we're just gonna like turtle this battle a little bit and go for the new curse. I'm gonna only go after the marriage go with Rotos A3 when I know I can one-shot it and get an extra turn and then kill the Sifi afterwards. Okay, maybe now is that opportunity. His both Nougars are very high HP though, so... They are gonna get some turns, but ah, come on! Am I really never gonna proc the Helm Smasher? Ah, God damn it! Yeah, I was kind of thinking about making a video to roast, uh, roast uh, scratches Rodos guide or world strongest Rodos video or whatever he made, where he's going with this weird build with merciless and going for like. 200% ignore defense, or whatever it is, even though you can go past 100, but now I'm not even getting the Helm Smasher proc, and um, this isn't working out either. I think I'm still gonna do that video though. 
I feel like Merciless set on Rotos isn't really the ideal choice. You could totally use it, but especially if you do use Helm Smasher as well, which he was using, you're gonna go way past 100% ignore defense, which doesn't give you any additional benefits. And you're not gonna have that much Merciless, you're much better off giving that gear to somebody else than Rotos. Or at least go with a flawless executioner, but he didn't even do that. And even regardless, I will just give it to some other nuker. Anyway, I think I'm gonna do that video maybe tomorrow. We will see. I was uh, when Scratch did that video. I got comments in my Discord that I should make a roast video about it. I am kind of hesitant. I'm not really trying to. Uh, start beef with Scratch. I feel like sometimes I kind of uh, coincidentally kind of go after Scratch, not because of him, but because like his clanmates cheating and so on. I'm not really trying to make it personal, so <laughs> I'm, I was kind of hesitant to make the Trost video, but I'm I'm sure I, he can take it and um, could be some fun to ma <laughs> make a reaction video like that. But yeah, Rod Rodos is one of those champions, and I would say the other ones too, that have very high basic nor defense, that you're not really, you don't really need to go with Merciless, you do get those other additional stats, like you get lots of crit damage and so on, but Rodos doesn't need it, and you're only gonna get so many good Merciless sets. S somebody like Lazarus, for instance, with good multipliers, but no inbuilt ignore defense, is gonna get much more use out of that set. I do hate how the Helm Smasher works, so I wish it would. I mean, I guess Platinum does love RNG and it's a gotcha game, but you have 50% chance to ignore 25% defense. I would much rather it be that you have, um, I don't know, 100% chance to ignore 10% of enemy defense. That that would be way better. I mean, you're gonna have some RNG, but... Yeah, so... If they doubled the, ch uh, the chance, made it 100%, and instead of going to 12.5% ignore defense, But just wait for skills to ignore. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't know why they even elaborate that in the description. That doesn't mean anything. But even if we basically lost like five percent or two and a half percent in the trade-off, I would much, much rather have this at hundred percent proc rate. But yeah, maybe I'll save that for the video. I guess I'm kind of giving the the point of that video anyway. But as you can see, you have sixty percent. Ignore defense on Rotos, and if you just have the mastery and Davids or Lethal set, you're already at 110, which is past the ignore defense gap. There's really no point to get merciless. Even cruel isn't that big deal on Rotos, which I'm, which is why I'm with Stone Skin. It would of course give you more damage on the other skills, but the other skills on Rotos don't really do that much damage, it's it's all about the A3. Okay, nice, I'm looking at the clan boss and I have some unused keys as well. Okay, I guess I have used so many keys anyway that doing a key, key on hard clan boss is not gonna give that much Results, but it does look kind of embarrassing that I have two clan boss keys that I didn't use, but again, I'm doing the video on the morning, so that's why I haven't done anything else yet. Okay, we got the Armand's pick. I think I saw his uh, clan clan name was something like Shadow, Shadow Dracula or something. That's 
That's an interesting name. That that, that sounds like not, not to like not to be toxic, but that kind of sounds like a name that I would have used when I I was a teenager. Edgy, uh, edgy emo boy. That's the type of names that I would have gone for as well. I don't think I have ever actually gotten any comments about people guessing it or asking about it, but um, I mean, you might kind of guess where my my actual in-game name comes from. I've been using this name for I don't know how many years, but super many years since I was a kid. And I mean, I don't talk about it that much on videos, but I have definitely talked about it many times. I have been enjoying anime shows since I was a kid. I think that might kind of divide some opinions. Some people are gonna like do the same thing and some people are gonna not like those kind of shows, but I used to be a big fan of the... I guess I feel like nowadays the anime isn't as good as it used to be. Maybe that's just how everybody feels like, but when I was a kid, there was tons of TV shows that were a little bit edgy, and I don't mean edgy in... Well, I guess for adults they might sti still seem, or retroactively they might seem a bit cringe, but there was a lot of children shows that were kind of um, a little bit more m mature or adult themed. Ah, uh, wait. Yeah, I guess I'm just gonna go with the Ankara. And like the type of shows that I liked when I was a kid was something like uh, uh, Code Chaos, Kaiji, the Ultimate Surv Survivor, uh, Death Note, that, that's where the name comes from. In um, in Japanese, Shinigami means God of Death, and it's not specifically from Death Note, because there's Shinigamis in many animes, but that's like a word that is often seen in those type of shows. That's where the name comes from. I used to always be Shinigami, which is kind of like his clan name, that it's a little bit too long and a little bit edgy. And everybody was always calling me Shini on like MS and Messenger or Skype in World of Warcraft or even in RuneScape actually when we were still using MS and Messenger. But then I just changed it to Shini because everybody was calling me Shini anyway. So that's where it comes from. I think many people might probably guess that because it's kind of uh, kind of obvious, but anyway. It is too late to change that now, and I feel like it's actually a pretty good name, because it's kind of ambitious. Is it not ambitious? Ambivalent? Damn, I... That word I'm definitely not gonna be able to say. I think ambivalent? You... It's kind of neutral, that you're not fully sure what it is about, but those who know can probably guess that I'm a weep, so... I feel like it's kind of good incognito username and it's all also pretty short one so the, the issue that is that it's a kind of popular name so sometimes I don't get it in every game but every gamer has to deal with those issues by the way that's okay that's one UI thing that is really good about trade because you can even see from this guy's name this guy's name that Raid does... I think I'm gonna save the revive. Yeah, let's not use the re revive. Raid does allow tons of symbols and different letters from other languages. Not just like Cyrillic and other weird letters like this, but they do allow all kinds of like heart symbols and gesture marks and Windows alt key codes and that kind of stuff. And it gives players a lot more options to get the nickname that they want. Um, I think somebody might have made videos about that, but there are seven ways, like, if you want... Maybe I shouldn't say that about me specifically, but if you want your name to look exactly like somebody else's name in Raid, 
like mine. It used to be a thing that some people in IPR were using. They were everybody named IPR Frog with the exact same spelling and you wouldn't be able to differentiate between them because there's some Windows uh, alt key codes that you can put on their name that the game accepts and recognizes but they don't show them visually so even though you have that in the name it doesn't show and you can basically get any name that you want in red even if somebody is using that name because you can you can put some windows uh, alt key codes that are not gonna be visible anyway so and it's not gonna be like massive amount of spaces and the name it's just gonna be the name and omitting all of the Ah, misclick. <laughs> Omitting all of the unrecognized uh, symbols. Okay, this fight was winnable. I just accidentally misclicked on my mouse. If I just revived Narciss there, I was good. It wasn't even about me talking, but I just... Uh, I misclicked uh, a number. Anyway, if you didn't know, then you know, but... I kind of... I had that fight in my... Uh, in my hand, but I just misclicked. But yeah, I, I kind of talked about this in the last video that I do kind of feel bad about in the current meta by the fact that I'm pretty much speaking the exact same team every battle, but they are my best champions and there's very very rarely any reason to pick anything else apart from this, so I do hope that changes a bit. I feel like it didn't used to be that way. Even early on in the live arena, I feel like I had more options, even though I have gotten many good champions after that, but it still kind of feels that way. Okay, Silent Ghost. We we have another edgy name. And uh, like for example this guy with he could just remove all of those axes. I'm pretty sure he just wanted them there. But let's say there was somebody else named Silent Ghost. He could get that name even without the axes. Like I said IPR used to do that, and sometimes Matthew used to do that well, just to troll people that maybe somebody quit the game or something like that, and then everybody everybody used his name on that reset or something like that. I don't think people have been doing that in a while in either, either one of those two clans, though. I guess people kind of got bored of it and people just aren't that's motivated to troll in the game anymore. Maybe I'm not gonna pick the Duchess unless he goes with like Galatir or a lot of the boss. I'm hoping that I could just go with Helicat and he doesn't doesn't get any block buff debuff champions or buff trippers. I think I only used Helicat in one fight today and that fight went well. Okay. He has two champions with it so it's not possible. Am I just gonna go with the Dutchess? Yeah, I guess we're just gonna go with the Dutchess since he did pick a lot of debuffs and um, I would rather go with the Helicat but um, there's really nothing else to pick at this point. Okay, I think this time we're still gonna go with the Lockout Band though. We already have the Armands anyway and 
he doesn't really have hard CC like that. Oh, what? I'm kind of surprised that he didn't actually ban the Armands, but since he didn't, I feel like Armands is just gonna... <laughs> we should go first, or at least cut in, and we should just decimate his team with the Armands turn meter still. Unless he has like everybody in stone skin, and he doesn't. We're then gonna get the double turn here, I think, because we're gonna steal it from multiple people. Right? Okay, yeah. So we can polymorph the Lazarus even, even before it's turn and get rid of the stone skin. Yeah, but my team is strong when it works, but I use the same trick over and over again, and I don't have other tricks, so... When it's not good, it's not good, but when it is, then I can destroy some people as well. Okay, finally we got the Helm Smasher Brock on Rotos, when it doesn't matter at all. Like, when I need it, I don't get it, and now I'm I'm sure it would have died even without the Brock. But okay, now we get it for good measure and kill it like twice over. Which doesn't help me. <laughs> help me in any way. Anyway, I, I guess we we did destroy this guy, so that's gonna give me good feeling in my mind, but that's about it. Anyway, I don't I don't think I I'm gonna recap all of the raid news on this one live arena video because a lot of them is gonna. Uh, like unfold in the upcoming couple days, but I think I'm gonna make several news videos this week because I think there's gonna be some interesting stuff. Okay, <laughs> this time he got the Armands. Let's see how it goes the other way. Am I gonna get a single turn against him? Yeah, I think I'm still gonna go with the dots, though. So. I'm getting closer to get my 6-star polymorph on UDK. I think I got like 100-something to tier 2 tokens, and you basically need 400, like 100 for 5-star and 300 for 6-star, and I'm at 5, so I'm basically Halfway into it, maybe like five months or whatever, but <laughs> it's still gonna take a little bit. I hope UDK isn't um, irrelevant by the time that I get it done, or maybe like a couple of weeks after that, like happened with Duchess, but I think that that may be, to be honest. UDK has been kind of too good for too long, so I wouldn't even be shocked if Plarium actually nerfs it. I think it's, if you ask me, I think it's more likely that UDK gets nerfed than Armands, to be honest, but I'm not sure if either one of them is gonna get actually nerfed. Should I even go with Rotos? Maybe I'll just go with Wukong on this, this battle. Yeah, let's, let's go with Wukong. Maybe I'll let him go with Triple Nuker. I don't think any of my other stuff makes sense here. Maybe like Mikage, but my Mikage isn't that fast, so... Maybe I should go with Mikage though. If he picks like a lockout and I ban the Armands, Maybe that would be a worth a shot here. Even though I don't use my Mikage a lot, I do feel like Mikage is one of the best live arena champions. Okay. Did he not see my bills? I yeah, we're gonna go with Triple Noker. Yeah, I mean, we do have everybody in. Or be stone skin. I think we can do this. Okay, we're locked in. 
he even banned the Rotos, so he didn't let me go with Triple Nuker. But I still do have the Wukong in Storm skin as well, so I think I should be getting some some turns, even if he does go first with the Shu Chen. Wait, what was that? Oh yeah, I guess, uh, yeah, I guess he was yeah we waiting out for the stone skin. Okay, now it's looking bad. I don't think I can one shot the Ankora, but I should be killing everybody else with the. Okay, let, let's see if we get reaction. As long as I can get a turn here, I will definitely kill everybody but Ankara. Okay, we didn't get reaction, but we survived it anyway, so I guess I'll take it. Oh yeah, we can't really use any skills. Um, Wukong is block revived, and we have block buff debuff on Narsus. Come on, this is gonna be like the last fight or the second last fight, so let's make it count. Oh, the, we, can, we can actually block revive the... Wait, I'm not gonna get the extra turn. Do I want to go for that though? Yeah, I think I do. I could use the nuke, but I don't think it's gonna kill the Angora. But we can block revive the... Um... The, whatever it's called, Mesomal, so might as well do it. Also, I think if I fear the Shu Chen now, he doesn't have... Oh, okay, I didn't get it. He doesn't have Narses on the team. That might have been good if we got the fear on her. I think um, even if the Angora had the immunity, I think she would have lost a turn, maybe. But that didn't happen because of um, Shu Chen resisting the fear. Damn, I guess he just doesn't have the hardest hitting Lazarus in the game. <laughs> my my narcissist is just um, ace tanking the Lazarus even without any <laughs> any reaction procs pretty pretty impressively. I mean, both of the times UD gets book one hit, but even still, Narcissus has like 2.5k defense. Is it's not very high. I don't think we're... Is it gonna cut in? Please don't. Come on, let's get the... No, okay. No taunt. Okay, Shu Chen is polymorphed. We are also locked out for 110, so... Not looking too good. Oh yeah, he does have the Angora passive anyway, so it's not like I can CC my way out of this. Can I survive? Okay, I could, yeah. Yeah, his, his Lazarus could definitely use the Merciless set. I hope he didn't put his Merciless set on his Rotos. But the Lazarus could definitely use a little bit more damage. And if he had that, then he would he would have destroyed me even faster. But I think we lost. Even if no matter who we kill now, we still lost, I think, right? I mean, he's gonna revive it with turn meter and cooldowns, and Shu Chen is also gonna like uh, give extra turns or CC us, so there's no way we can, yeah, cut in. <laughs> it, it would have been so funny if my Narth 7 survived. If it survived that one again, it almost could have happened, to be honest. Maybe if I get a little, little bit better gear on my. Narcissus. I can actually show you this couple minutes of time, so I'm not gonna miss the last battle, but um 
should I just sell it from the optimizer? Like you, you get this issue with trade often that um, your um, where is it? Like it's not easy to make a build or a set with all of your best possible gear pieces. Okay, this is not the gear set that I have on. The um, wait. A little bit uh, technical difficulties. No. Okay, it's not that hard. Anyway, so that's not the gear set that I have on right now. What? The client is kind of bugging out a little bit here. My narcissist is right now on a much faster set with speed boost. But um, even there you can see that I have a couple really good pieces, like those cruel two pieces, uh, helmet and shield. They are the better ones than what I have on right now, on lethal set. But you can't always get all of your best possible pieces on one build and have enough crit rate and other desirable stats, like good amount of speed or whatever you want. If I could just get one more piece of the puzzle, like, may like maybe get better gloves, I could actually still get way better build on my Narsus because some of my best pieces for HP nuke build I don't even have on him because I I can't get them fit. Actually, those weren't even the best ones. It would be that helmet, but not that shield. But yeah, I, I could actually get a pretty big improvement on my Narsus build if I can just get a good pair of gloves with good amount of crit rate. Ideally they would be on lethal set, but we will see. I guess force helps a little bit with that and chaos or and you definitely want to make not just use them on the right item sets, but on the um for the right faction and on the right item slot. To go after the pieces that you really need to get get your best best gear together in one build but even when you do that it's not like you can just wheel it into existence like you can with the afk journey you can just literally buy shards for the champion that you want i wish we could get a little bit more of that with rage as well but yeah, obviously they are not gonna let me buy Galatir or Siegfried or whatever, but would be nice though. I mean, like I said, the champion balance, some of them are much better than other ones. In AFK Journey, for instance, I feel like they are much more... Um, nothing is that much better than everybody else. Obviously, if we could choose what champions that we get, it will be the same, same couple of champions that everybody goes after. I mean, it's kind of like that in AFK Journey as well, but there's a big selection of good champions, and not everybody is going for the same uh, team comps. Yeah, he already went with the triple nuker, so I mean, with the triple support, we don't really need to go for the UDK, so maybe I'm gonna go with triple nuker again as well. Oh, he went with the... I can't recall that champion's name, but he's the Bane of Stone Skin, the Burn Champion, and I do have a lot of Stone Skin, so... I don't know if I can ban it, though, I kind of... Wait, what's his other nuker event in this team? I kind of feel like a jerk banning banning that champion, but that probably would have been what I was going to ban anyway, so... I was going to say that maybe, maybe I'll ban him instead of other ones, but what is he then his other nuker? But I have everybody except 
Narthus in the stone skin. That champion is just gonna gut me if I let him have it, so we're gonna go with this and maybe he can kill me with the A1s with all of the CC that he has. Maybe he's counting on that, that I wouldn't go for a ban on his nuker because he would slowly kill me when I'm locked out. I don't think that's gonna happen, so let's see. I have pretty low cooldowns on both Wukong and Rotos, and Rotos gets extra turns and so on, so surely I can kill him with just A1s. Maybe he has some weird nuke build on one of these supports. But I think he just drafted one nuker against me and maybe he actually did that on purpose and not accidentally. Yeah, the, the Ankara would have been kind of useful here to get CC a little bit less. But I still feel like we can do it. Kinda unfortunate though that everybody got um, buff stripped and stunned and I didn't get polymorph proc. If I did get it right there, I think I would have already won the fight at this point. If I just got one turn on Rodos. I don't think this fight is going to be stalemate though. Th there's no way that he can kill my Darkness, but I I still feel like I can actually kill his team. Okay, I, I guess we're going to find out. But I feel like if I didn't man the burn champion he would have just he would have demolished my team so i had to go go for a ban on it he doesn't really look like a primal champion he looks pretty normal he doesn't look that that scary like some of the primals do but he is a primal champion, actually pretty good one and very popular in live arena. More popular than people might actually think. I do meet him like multiple times on every live arena session and that's in spite of him being a very new primal champion as well. Okay, I'm gonna do this for like a few minutes, but he definitely can't kill me, but if I can't kill him, then I'm just gonna leave the fight. I kind of thought I could win it. Maybe I I could have gotten a bit better luck, luck at the start and not get all of the stone skin bar stripped. If that didn't happen, I would have instantly won. So I was kind of counting on that during the drafting. Like, both, both Wukong and Rotos were in a stone skin, and he buff stripped both of them, which is a 50% chance, and then both of them got stunned and never got a turn, so...
I guess it's a pretty, pretty much a waiting game. Oh, I, <laughs> I was just about to open Reddit and I actually got a turn. Okay, let's see what... Do we have anything else? How are you building Dutchess in... 24? Is there no other additional? I feel like my Duchess is just behind times. Swift Barry. I haven't switched her up in so long. And I'm curious how you got yours built. Super tank with Zone Skin. I can push 400 speed if I lower resist. Any recommendations? I'm pushing Live Arena for Marius and I think she's lacking. I would definitely say that uh, even my build with uh, Bolster is kind of... Wait, he's actually... He killed my Duchess, what? I wasn't expecting my Duchess to die. I kind of... Uh, Thought that he could, my team accept Darches, but I thought Darches would still survive it. Anyway, I, I, I guess it's it's GG. I feel like I should have won this fight, but happens. And th that's definitely gonna, yeah, it's gonna be the last fight of the day. So in regards to the Darches thing, wait, how can? <laughs> How can I put it so that you can actually wait? Okay, maybe you can see it now a little bit better, but here is the Duchess build that I'm running. I would have honestly recommended this build before the Narciss meta. I mean, I would still recommend it, but now I wouldn't say that it's the clear, obvious choice, but I would say that it basically falls down in between these two. Either you go for the full stone skin and kind of fast, or you go for the bolster stone skin kind of fast. Now, chances are that he's not going to be able to do 4p stone skin, in which case bolster is still definitely an option. Maybe you go with 2p immortal set or whatever you have, but whichever build you go for, if we talk about live arena, which he's asking about, I definitely wouldn't go for a super slow build anymore, which kind of used to be the preferred choice back in the day for classic arena defense. People would go with incredibly slow duchesses with reaction accessories. That is kind of out of the meta right now, and it's it was more for classic arena anyway, so pretty much kind of balanced tanky and fast stone skin or bolster. I don't really think there's that much other things that I would consider. You can totally go for resistance. I would say that um, you might accidentally happen to have like around 400 resistance, like I do, and that is often enough to resist many nukers. If you want, you could go a little bit more, maybe like 500 or 600 without a big investment into resistance, and that's going to be enough to resist most things, except maybe lockout. You could totally go for super high resistance, like 900 to 1100, and sometimes resist lockout champions, but that can be pretty hard to do. There's a lot of accuracy buffs right now, even in the meta. I think Galatir does it, pretty sure. And then um, champions like Yumeko can have accuracy aura, which they they will often bring if they see that you use that type of team. But yeah, I would say either go for medium resistance or high resistance, or then basically with zero like me. But the easiest build that most people can do is that you just go with the 6p stone skin. Now, if you have accessories on a stone skin, you could even go with two piece immortal or whatever, if you can do that. Or even, uh, I guess you could even, you could even go for four piece, but I, I don't think there's much of incentive to actually 
um, go past six piece in the stone skin set. Let me double check what the that effect of increasing the shield at least is not a big deal. Yeah, maybe if you have some accessories, seven piece set might be good just to get a little bit more HP, but you could just go with other two piece sets if you can hit them into that build, but that's pretty much all there is to that, uh, the Dots' build. I am running the bolster, but I do think the Stolen Skin set is often the easier choice, and if you have him with a good amount of speed, like the amount of speed that he has, then oftentimes if she is in a Stolen Skin with a 6p Stolen Skin and gets a 2 turn effect, then if your Duchess goes before the enemy Nukar, they basically can't do anything on the first turn, assuming that it's something with um, single target Nuke. It doesn't even have to be like Rotos, but maybe Siegfrond. If he can only hit your Duchess in the Stone Skin, that's gonna prolong his actions for one turn, and that is often very effective. The thing is though that there's a lot of CC going on right now, and lots of champions with buff strips. So and then your stone skin is often gonna be removed, but that's probably what I would go with. By the way, now that I think about it, I do have a Duchess guide as well. It's a bit old at this point, but I think I was pretty um meticulous. I don't know what's the word. Meticulous? Like a it has all of the relevant information. I think I... Yeah, I went through the nine yards with the masteries and different builds, so... If you're more interested about the Duchess, you can... You can watch this video. It might be a little bit... Actually, I don't think it's outdated at all. Basically, nothing has changed except... There's maybe a little bit more... Um, nuance with the 4 piece set bonuses with the accessories, like I said. But this guide is definitely still valid, so watch that if you are interested. But anyway, that's it for today's live arena. Good luck for you guys with your own sessions as well, and see ya.